السلام عليكم و we'll talk today about SSI surveillance uh, as we said before NHSN have many components and uh, these include patient safety components long term care outpatient uh, and others uh, and for here we are interested only in patient safety component As we said before, patient safety component has a procedure associated module, device associated module, and other modules. We already talked about the device associated modules like CLAPC, VAE, VAP, CAUTI, and dialysis events. And for the procedure associated module, only SSI is available. This slide shows the types of uh, HAI uh, in point prevalence survey in the USA and European Union and the National Guard hospitals in, in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, as you see in USA and European Union, SSI comes as the first and the most common type of uh, HAI, around 20% of all HAIs. Uh, and in the National Guard hospitals in, in Saudi Arabia, uh, it, it is 8% of all uh, HAI. Um, the, reason, uh, uh, the reason is not exactly clear why SSI uh, is not the first one here, but uh, maybe because of the limited post surveillance uh, culture. Uh, as you know, most of SSI happen outside the hospital. If you don't look at them, you will report always uh, underestimated uh, SSI. This slide shows the prevalence of SSI in developed and developing countries, and uh, this is one of the reports uh, uh, reviews uh, done by the WHO uh, office. And as you see, uh, the the percentage of SSI uh, in in developing countries is around 12%. Uh, compared to 3% in developed countries, and this is like four folds higher uh, in developing countries compared to developed countries. Uh, the impact of SSI, uh, there is uh, SSI has a huge impact on different aspects. One of the aspects is mortality among surgical patients with SSI. So. Uh, SSI increased the risk uh, of death by 2 to 11 percent compared with operative patients without SSI. So the attributable uh, death, mort <coughs> the attributable mortality in patients with uh, SSI is 2 to 11 percent. Death rate among surgical patients with SSI is 3 percent. 3 percent is an average uh, all over the uh, types, different types of surgery. Uh, but SSI, 77% of death among patients with SSI are directly attributed to SSI. So if the patient with SSI died, most probably in three quarter of them would be uh, the SSI is the direct cause of death. Uh, also, the impact of SSI in hospital stay, as you probably understand, it increased the length of stay by a week to 10 days and uh, increased the cost of uh, care by $30,000 per uh, SSI. This is in US data. And most estimates do not account for other uh, costs also like rehospitalization, outpatient treatment, post discharge expenses and others. Uh, so the, the the cost for uh, for uh, the cost of SSI in the healthcare system is huge. Uh, this slide shows the uh, risk factors for SSI, and as you see, there is two types of risk factors: personal risk factor and healthcare risk factor. The reason why they divide this uh, risk factors uh, into two groups is that usually but not always personal risk factors is difficult to uh, change sometimes impossible to change like age or uh, the presence of diabetes or something like that but healthcare usually uh, we can modify because it's uh, uh, his healthy care risk factor that you can change based on appropriate practices and recommendation for the personal 
It includes age, obesity, diabetes, very orbital hypo, uh, hyperglycemia, uh, means hyperglycemia be just before, during, and after the surgery, malnutrition, infection at remote site like tonsillitis, like appendicitis, colonization with microorganisms like uh, presence of acinetobacter in throat or uh, um, MRSA in the axilla or groin, and so on, comorbidity like uh, when the ASA score is high means, uh, or the, when the comorbidity is uh, is high, the ASA score becomes high, uh, and a seizure score. Uh, systematic steroid use because this decreases the immunity, smoking or nicotine use, and poor one the class. These are all risk factors. Uh, maybe uh, the poor one the class. Uh, need, uh, it's a personal risk factor, but uh, also is related to healthcare uh, factors. Uh, but healthcare factors like removal of hair. Are you removing hair by clipping or shaving? Uh, prolonged duration of surgery, inadequate surgical techniques, uh, presence of drains because the drain is uh, connected to outside the back, so is a source of infection, periorbital uh, hypothermia, uh, means the patient become cold in the OR, uh, inappropriate use of antimicrobial prophylaxis using the wrong or the wrong type, the wrong dose of antimicrobial prophylaxis, prolonged uh, preoperative stay as the more the, the more the patient stay in the hospital, uh, the more likely to get uh, infection. Uh, pathogenesis of SSI can be divided into two big groups, endogenous and exogenous. As we said, uh, exogenous is very clear. Uh, you have an external uh, microorganism contaminate the operative site. The source of that organism could be surgical staph, uh, flora, like they have, for example, uh, MRSA under the nails, the surgeon or the surgeon assistants or the nurses working in the OR. Uh, inadequate hand hygiene for every uh, OR staff, breaks in aseptic techniques, uh, contaminated surgical instruments, inappropriate sterilization, contaminated theater, uh, or uh, uh, which include the environment uh, and air for OR. The endogenous means the patient himself is the source of infection. And as we said, uh, the patient, uh, we, uh, we are in human, as human being, have uh, organisms uh, which are uh, present um, in the uh, skin mucous membrane, uh, GIT. Uh, these uh, are normally not uh, causing any problem, but uh, when you start doing surgery, uh, you introduce these uh, commensals to the surgical site and cause infection. Uh, rarely, uh, endogenous can be spread from another infection uh, or processes in another uh, surgery. Uh, so uh, this is another type of uh, endogenous. So endogenous usually commensal uh, go through the skin incision or the surgery incision. Uh, uh, mucous membrane or skin, um, and the uh, hematogenous from infection at another place. This slide shows the most common uh, organism uh, shown in SSI uh, patients in uh, in US uh, between 2015 and 17. And as you see, the most common is Staph aureus, E. coli, enterococci, coagulase negative. Uh, and remember, coagulase negative is on is commensal on the skin. Uh, staph, uh, E. coli, and enterococci, uh, enterococcus faecalis, uh, again, uh, the, the most important ones. Um, uh, this slide shows the SSI surveillance definition that we will talk about in the next slide, and uh, they are arranged in four big groups, including the SSI surveillance, the SSI event details, the denominator details, and the risk index category, including three item ASA, uh, score, one class, duration of the procedure.
Let's start with the first group, SSI surveillance. This includes the setting requirements, surveillance methods, and procedure code. For the setting, uh, surveillance of SSI uh, will occur in any inpatient or outpatient uh, setting where uh, procedure uh, can be done. So uh, it's not like the device associated infection, most of the device associated infection like uh, CLEPSI, CAUT, VAE, VAB, all are done in inpatient locations only, but uh, for SSI it can be inpatient or outpatient as long as there is uh, some where the procedure or surgeries are done. Uh, for the requirements, you have at least one NHSN operative procedure uh, uh, done uh, in a patient during the surveillance plan. Um, and you collect the numerator and denominator data on all procedures included in that uh, uh, procedure category. Uh, and when you decide what procedure category you do, you should ask yourself, are you taking all surgeries or all operative procedures or only high volume procedure or only high risk uh, procedures? Uh, basically, we don't take all operative procedures uh, and we usually make a combination between high volume and high risk uh, procedures. For the methodology, as you see, it is similar to the methodology in device associated. It's an active surveillance, patient-based surveillance, prospective surveillance, priority-directed surveillance, and risk-adjusted uh, uh, surveillance that uh, bring risk-adjusted rates. Uh, one one uh, difference here, or uh, we have to stress on this part, Concurrent and post-discharge surveillance methods should be used to detect SSI following inpatient operative procedure and post-discharge surveillance for outpatient operative procedure only. Uh, so what does it mean? Uh, it does mean that this is one of the differences between device-associated infection and SSI. Uh, while we cannot or we shouldn't uh, uh, follow the patient after uh, discharge from the unit in device associated infection uh, like CLEPSI, uh, CAUTI, VAE, and VAB, uh, we should, uh, we are required uh, to continue surveillance uh, during the patient stay if it's in a patient or uh, and uh, after the patient discharged from the hospital for the period defined for. Uh, follow up either 30 days or 90 days. Uh, so we have here uh, post discharge surveillance as the major part of detecting new cases uh, for uh, SSI. Uh, active SSI surveillance, uh, how you do that? You review medical records or surgery clinic patient records, uh, like what? Like admission record, uh, readmission records, ER, OR logs, uh, ER admission, uh, patient charts for signs and symptoms, lab imaging and other diagnostic techniques, clinician healthcare professional notes, uh, and the ICD-10 uh, infection diagnosis codes. Uh, so all this will help you in determining if this surgery fit with our uh, surveillance for that specific SSI category will help you to collect the numerator and denominator data, uh, readmission, ER, and uh, professional notes are all uh, all are methods for detecting new uh, the 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 um, uh, post-discharge surveillance that seek medical treatment in the hospital. Additionally, uh, other sources for active SSI surveillance is visit to the ICU ward, the surgeon uh, survey by mail or telephone, but this is sometimes not suitable uh, here, but uh, you can do uh, uh, something similar, um, uh, surgeon or patient survey by mail or telephone. You can also detect SSI using this method, but again, this is not usually done. Uh, you can replace this by giving the patient a discharge a card uh, 
uh, or information about what are the uh, signs and symptoms of uh, SSI and you need to contact this number or go to the ER if you have this uh, signs and symptoms so they can use this card for uh, follow up for uh, monitoring their own monitoring for SSI uh, signs and symptoms and then uh, they can seek uh, treatment if they meet this uh, criteria. So uh, this is uh, all methods uh, for uh, post discharge surveillance or active surveillance. Um, and as you see, you cannot use only one method. A combination of these methods would be the best uh, or you have other methods identified by your facility uh, to detect uh, the cases during the stay and after uh, after discharge. Usually during the stay in inpatient uh, uh, surgery, uh, it is usually easier, much easier. It is similar to other surveillance, so it's much easier than post discharge. So the 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 challenge is post discharge surveillance. And that's why you, you need to uh, use multiple methods to catch as much as you can, because if you don't spend the effort in post discharge surveillance, your uh, SSI rate will be zero. Uh, SSI surveillance operative procedure, uh, the definition of operative procedure. This is a proce procedure that meet uh, the following criteria. It included in the ICD-10 uh, codes take place during an, operat an operation where at least one incision is made through the skin or mucous membrane or mucous membrane, including laparoscopic approach. We consider laparoscopic uh, incision, small incision as incision, take place and OR. So you have an operative procedure included in our list. Uh, we have the category list, but you have to uh, look at the uh, specific surgeries under the ICD-10 uh, that under this category of surgery, and the the operation is done through uh, in the OR through a skin or mucous membrane incision. Uh, operative room OR uh, is an area that meet the criteria for OR. And is, and is constructed or renovated, uh, when it is constructed or renovated, uh, you can use the, the criteria for OR like facilities, guideline, institute criteria, or American Institute of Architects criteria. Uh, this may include uh, the traditional OR uh, in every hospital, uh, C-section room, interventional, interventional radiology room, uh, cardiac catheterization lab. All these are uh, rooms that uh, can be defined as OR room if they are meeting the criteria as we said. This slide shows uh, the different uh, procedure categories uh, that we that are included in the SSI surveillance and you have three columns here uh, code procedure code which is three to four digit um, uh, abbreviation for the surgical category, uh, like for example, CARD, C A R D is cardiac surgery, uh, COL is uh, gallbladder surgery, and so on. Uh, and the operative procedure full name, uh, second column, and what are the exact procedures description uh, under this category? For example, uh, for the CARD or cardiac surgery, these are Procedure in the heart includes valves or septum procedure, does not include coronary artery bypass graft because it has a separate one, cabbage uh, B or cabbage C, surgery on vessels, heart transplantation or pacemaker implant, uh, implantation. And again, this can be included in other surgery. So for the surgeries for the valves and septum, you should go uh, and goggle these under ICD-10 to find out what types. Uh, we have uh, an Excel file that include all uh, types of uh, surgeries under each category of uh, these uh, procedures. And as, be, as the previous slide, this is the continuation of the different uh, surgical procedures, including in the SSI surveillance uh, and the description of uh, what under this uh, category.
SSI surveillance operative procedure. Uh, we here give you examples from the previous uh, slides like uh, breast cardiac and cabbage, breast surgery, cardiac surgery, coronary bypass uh, with schist and donor incision or both uh, incision to incision. Uh, for breast is excision of the lesion or tissue from the breast, including radical mastectomy modified, uh, mastectomy quadrant resection, lumpectomy, which is moving of only a lump uh, for uh, histopathology or for whatever reason, incisional biopsy, uh, mammoblasty. So all different types of breast surgery is all under one category. So we don't take only uh, mammoblasty or, an, or lumpectomy. We cannot do uh, that. Uh, we have to take uh, a group of surgery under this and make follow-up. How you know exactly the type? There is an Excel file, as we said, and there is Google. You can see what under the breast surgery included in this category. Operative procedure codes. These are 39 NHSN operative procedure codes. Uh, current uh, procedure terminology, procedure code mapping to NHSN operative procedure codes. Uh, if you want to know exactly what is uh, the details of this, you can go to this website. Uh, and if you open the Excel file, you will see uh, there is a sheet that include the groups and uh, for each group, there is a separate sheet to, in to give you the exact uh, surgery name that fall under this uh, uh, code category. And if you uh, here go to uh, the cardiac surgery, for example, you will see this is exactly the name of surgeries included under the card uh, surgery group or procedures like uh, thoracos thoracoscopy, uh, pericardioctomy, creation of uh, pericardial window, and so on. This is uh, a big list of surgeries that are included. So for you, you should include all these uh, the uh, all ones in your hospital that fall in this uh, uh, list. And of course, you you cannot have all this surgery done in your hospital. Probably you have three or four of them are done in your hospital. So you include all this category under cardiac surgery. If we go to the next uh, group of definitions, SSI event uh, to, uh, details, you have surveillance period date of event, time frame for elements and secondary BSI. The first item on SSI event is the surveillance period. And the surveillance period in SSI surveillance is different according to the type of uh, SSI. So for superficial incisional SSI, it is 30 days. For secondary incisional SSI that happen in the secondary incision, uh, it is 30 days always. Only deep and organ SSI can be 30 or 90 days according to the list of uh, surgeries that we will show you in the next slide. So the, the surgeries in this list are for deep and organ only, as we said, uh, it should be 30 days only, and they are the majority of uh, surgery. Uh, this list show you the the surgeries that should be um, uh, should be uh, followed up for 90 days um, for organ or deep only as we said superficial and secondary always nine, uh, 30 days. The next item is the date of event and time frame for SSI elements. For the time for the date of event. It is the date of the first element used to meet the criteria for SSI. For the time frame, uh, there is no window, the regular window as we know in uh, device associated infection like CLEPSI, CAUTI, VAB, uh, VAE. Uh, we have a, a specific window with a certain duration. It is seven days in CLEPSI, VAB, and uh, CAUTI, and five days in VAE five days or less. But here in SSI, there is no exact window, but uh, they said it should be something close together, uh, so the symptoms close together within seven to 10 days, and no more than two to three days between uh, elements of the definition.
This slide show you the time for developing SSI and also detecting this in post discharge surveillance. As you see, uh, only 5% of the SSI can develop within the first week. And the highest incidence have been during second and third weeks uh, uh, where you have 43% uh, between 8 and 18 days. And another 30% or 31% have been uh, in the last 10 days of the month. Uh, over one month is about 20%. And that's why they did 90 days surveillance for some types of surgery. But what we can uh, know from this slide that most of the SSI will be detected outside the hospital after the discharge of the patient. As we discussed before in the CLEPSI, the secondary BSI happen in two scenarios. The first scenario when you have uh, a, a blood specimen collected during the BSI attribution period, and there is a bacteria that matching the, uh, the, the bacteria obtained from the primary site, which is the classic uh, secondary BSI. In the second scenario, you have the blood collecting during the window and the blood itself is one of the elements used to meet the criteria and uh, not necessarily you have a matching organism from the primary site because sometimes the primary site is not uh, 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 there is no organism from the primary site as the primary site is diagnosed clinically so if we uh, describe this in terms of SSI. So scenario one, when you have positive wound culture and a matching positive blood culture during the BSI attribution period, and this happened in all types of SSI, superficial deep and organ. But there is some organ SSI like uh, intra-abdominal infection, you can have the second scenario. Why? Because the second scenario in, in intra-abdominal infection, positive blood specimen is part of the criteria. So the, one of the criteria is to have positive blood specimen. So if the patient have fever, nausea, and abdominal pain, and positive blood specimen collected during the window, and here it is the difference, it's collected during the window, and uh, CT showing infection in the abdominal cavity. In this case, you have this blood, positive blood culture should be considered secondary BSI as it is part of the definition used to meet the criteria and there is no uh, primary site which is the uh, abdominal uh, infection there is no primary site organism these are uh, other example of scenario two and as you see most of them are uh, organ uh, SSI, uh, gastrointestinal infection, central nervous system infection, bone and joint infection, and so on. Um, and remember that uh, BSI attribution period is a fixed time. It's usually, it is always 17 days period, which is the date of event three days before and 13 days after. The next set of definitions are the denominator details, and this including the primary closure, emergency procedure, general anesthesia, inpatient, outpatient, scope, and diabetes. Primary, inc uh, primary incision closure means that the skin level is closed after the surgery, regardless of the presence of wires, wicks, drains, or other devices or objects extruding uh, through the incision. So if part of the incision is closed, it's considered primary uh, uh, incision closure. It includes surgery where the skin is closed by some means. Uh, uh, thus, if any portion of the incision is closed in the skin level by any manner, the, des the designation of primary closure should be assigned to the surgery. As we said, if part of the incision is closed, part is not closed, we will consider a primary closure. If, they, if, if we have multiple incisions, uh, as we have in laparoscope, we have usually we have three small incisions, one of them is closed and the others are not closed, we will consider this primary closure. 
this photo photos show um, the different closure methods here we have wires uh, we have uh, suture we have uh, closure of uh, some laparoscopic incision we have zebra closure so these are primary closure as long as uh, part of the skin is closed it is uh, primary uh, inc uh, incision closure on the other hand non-primary incision closure means that the skin left after the surgery completely unclosed and in this case it's called non-primary uh, closure and non-primary closure is considered at the skin level so the skin is completely open and sometimes this happen while closing the deeper tissue sometimes this happen without closing the deeper tissue emergency operative procedure uh, when the according the facility protocol is considered emergency or urgent procedure it is not planned procedure uh, or elective procedure so it is emergency procedure general anesthesia when the patient is uh, doing the surgery uh, with medication that make the patient unconscious paralyzed with muscles relaxed and this does not include the conscious sedation in patient to procedure when the patient admission date and the charge date are not the same so the patient for example admitted on monday and the charge in tuesday it's a different date then it is in patient we will consider this as inpatient procedure for outpatient procedure mean that the admission and the charge date are the same uh, day so this is called outpatient uh, procedure a scope when uh, the surgery is done through a, a, a specific scope like laparoscope for abdomen for example diabetes when the patient have diabetes as evidenced by the treatment with insulin or non-insulin anti-diabetic agents these include a patient who have diabetes with insulin resistance patient a female patient with gestational diabetes patient who are known to be diabetic and non-compliant with diabetic uh, medications the next set of definitions are the risk index category and these include asa uh, physical status or score wound class and duration of procedure for the risk index category it is composed uh, from three items or components asa score wound class and operative duration so we will give for each one of the three one or zero score one or zero for each one of the three items or components so score one will be given for asa score if the asa score is three four or five zero if it is one or two one the class will be given a score of one if the uh, one the class is contaminated class three or dirty infected class four but class one or two will take a score of zero operative duration more than the cut point will be given a score of one but uh, uh, less than the cut point will be given zero and the risk index category is the sum of the scores given to the three components of the risk index category as a score one the class and operative procedure so the risk index category ranges from zero when all the three are zero and three when all the three are given a score of one so between zero and three as we see the asa score and anesthesia score it is given from one to six six is not allowed to do uh, surveillance because this is a brain dead patient uh, one with two is healthy or one with mild systemic disease three four five is there is severe systemic disease that either incapacitating in three or life-threatening in four or the patient is expected to survive uh, 24 hours uh, without with or without the operation for the one the class we have three classes clean clean contaminated contaminated and dirty for the clean, it is uninfected wound, and uh, 
uh, if the surgery uh, is done, uh, make sure that uh, respiratory system, alimentary tract, genital system, uh, or urinary tract are not entered. And it's primary closed with this type like hysterectomy, uh, C-section, for example. But for clean contaminated, it means that one of these organs, respiratory, alimentary, genital, urinary tract are entered. Are entered, but uh, without unusual contamination. And uh, in this type of, uh, of this group, you have most of the surgeries like biliary tract surgery, appendix, vagina, oropharynx, if no evidence of infection or major break of uh, in technique of the surgery. And as we said, the first type uh, include uh, uh, surgeries, clean surgeries like uh, C section, hysterectomy, ovarian section, if no uh, signs of uh, infection are there. Uh, uh, for uh, certain types of surgeries like appendix, biliary, most of the types actually, cholecystectomy, colon, small bowel, uh, vaginal hysterectomy, all these are uh, considered. Uh, 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 contaminated, clean contaminated or two, it cannot be uh, clean. For uh, the third and, and fourth grade, which take a score of one, contaminated and dirty. For the contaminated here, we have open, fresh, accidental one, major breaks in the sterile technique or gross spillage from the GIT. So while they do the surgery, there is problem in sterile technique or there is a spillage from the GIT tract, uh, includes incision into acute non-virulent inflamed tissue. For the dirty, it is old traumatic wounds with retained devitalized tissue, wounds involving existing clinical infection or perforated viscera. Uh, so these are the severest form. And again, three and four will take a score of one. For the procedure duration, it is counted from the start of the procedure to the finish of the procedure. Uh, NHSN have a, a, a specific definition for the start and the finish. So the start time is the start of the incision, not the anesthesia time. So the time of the incision is the start of the procedure. The time of finish of the procedure is uh, when physician surgeon have completed all the procedure related activities, including closure of the wound, and an instrument and a sponge count are completed, dressing and drains are secure, all post operative radiologic studies to be done in the OR. So this means you close the wound, put the dressing, secure the drain, and do the x ray if needed. At that time, you say that the, the procedure has finished already. Uh, operation lasting more than the duration cut point, which is usually the 75 percentile of the duration. This is, you don't calculate, you get the number for the cut point, for cut point minutes. Uh, if the duration uh, exceeding this 75 percentile cut point, uh, so this is long duration and it will take a score of one. If the patient goes to the OR more than once during the same admission, another procedure is performed uh, within the same day, within 24 hours. So we report the combined duration of both procedure for each procedure. Say, for example, he did uh, cholecystectomy and did uh, on the same uh, day uh, hysterectomy or another, or another uh, surgery. Uh, you combine the duration for both surgeries. Uh, for bilateral procedure, when you have, for example, right knee replacement, left knee replacement, uh, you divide the time by two, unless you know exactly the time for the right and the time of the left is fine. If you don't know, you combine both time and divide by two. Uh, for the cut points, as, as I said, you don't calculate, and this is the cut points for each surgery. For example, uh, breast surgery is 196. So if the patient uh, spend in breast surgery uh, 200 minutes, it is more than the cut point. If they spend one and a half hour, 
uh, or two hours, uh, 90 and 90, uh, 180. Uh, this means it is uh, good or uh, you take a score of zero. And this is how we uh, calculate the patient risk index category. You give a score for ASA score, zero to one. Uh, one the class 0 to 1, procedure duration 0 to 1, and then count the 3, sum up the 3. So if you have uh, ASA score 1, 1 the class 0, and procedure duration 1, so the total risk index category the score is 2. Uh, recently, I don't want to say recently, but uh, there is another way of uh, complicated way of doing the risk adjusted uh, measure for SSI. Not only these three ASA score, one class and procedure duration, other items are included. And this is a paper describing how to improve the risk index category. As you see here, uh, you, uh, you will see um, for example, if we take the colon surgery, it's not only the three items that we do in the uh, risk index category, but also age, anesthesia, uh, ASA score, duration, endoscope, medical school affiliation. Is, is it medically affiliated, medical school affiliated? So there is a university affiliated with this hospital or not, number of beds in the hospital, 500, 300, one the class and so on. And Uchi surgery has its own risk factors. Uh, we cannot do, uh, we, we can use this as it is, but uh, ideally we have to create our own uh, risk factors from our data here in Saudi Arabia. So the procedure, the new procedure, uh, procedure risk is calculated from improved risk models. And these are done uh, through logistic regression models done or prediction models. Uh, done in large data set, national data set. Uh, 